So the next question is, what's your opinion about zero rating? So do you oversee any relation between this subject and the concept of development? Yeah, so zero rating, as we all know, is the practice of exempting certain applications from your monthly bandwidth caps. And people start wondering whether zero rating is a network neutrality problem because at least at first sight, it doesn't involve any technical discrimination among packets. It looks like an economic discrimination. You know, the packets all get to the user in the same way, but some count against your cap and some don't. So some people have questioned whether that's a network neutrality problem. I think the first thing to realize is that zero rating has a really strong discriminatory effect. So even though the packets are treated in the same way, users react really strongly to zero rating. And one of our key concerns in network neutrality and anti-discrimination rules is that we are worried that the ISP will make some applications more attractive than others. Well, zero rating is the perfect tool to do that. Because in surveys, users make very clear that if content is zero rated, they prefer it. And Slate, the online magazine in the US, did an experiment where they offered the same podcast to some users in a zero rated form and to others in a way that just counted against the cap. Users that were offered the zero rated version were 61% more likely to click on the podcast. So you have a huge impact on people's behavior. Once you have recognized that, you need to come to the conclusion that it really doesn't make any difference whether people discriminate or make certain applications more attractive by slowing them down or speeding them up or by exempting them from the cap. It's the same effect, just a different tool. So my view is that zero rating, the different kinds of zero rating should be treated in exactly the same way as technical forms of discrimination. So if we have, we, if we want, if we ban ISPs from charging content providers to be in the fast lane, we also have to ban ISPs from charging application and content providers to be zero rated. You, the key problem with charging for better treatment is that if some companies can pay so that their content loads faster or doesn't count against users' bandwidth cap, then those who can't pay don't have a chance to compete. And we know from the US proceeding that startups don't, are unable to pay to in, be in the fast lane, so they won't be able to be zero rated either. Or a lot of speakers, civil society organizations, churches, educational institutions, independent artists, they don't have money to pay to be zero rated. You know, large corporations do. And so you get exactly the same distortion that you create an environment where only those who can pay have an easy way of reaching people. At the same time, you get the same problems about downgrading the quality of service. You know, in paying for fast lanes, we are worried that the ISP will downgrade the quality of the technical transmission service. In zero rating, we have a lot of evidence from Europe that ISPs have an incentive to reduce bandwidth caps to make it more attractive to pay to be zero rated. So in those countries where ISPs do engage in zero rating, bandwidth caps decrease and unrestricted bandwidth becomes more expensive. So users are heard in, and application providers who can't pay are heard in two ways. They have less bandwidth available that they can use however they choose. And as an application provider, if I can't pay, I have an even harder time to getting to people because they don't really have a choice. At the same time, we have evidence from the Netherlands that if uh, the regulator bans zero rating, the ISPs increase the bandwidth caps. So. Um, the Dutch provider doubled its bandwidth caps at the same price from 5 to 10 gigabytes after zero rating was prohibited because you know, they wanted people to be able to use their own online video application and given that they couldn't zero rate, the only other choice was to give enough unrestricted bandwidth to everybody. And that uh, helps everybody because then we can use not just the provider's online video but others too. So, same with just singling out specific applications for zero rating without fees has the same distortionary effect should be banned as well. Now your question about, so
sort of how is this related to development? And you know, we sometimes hear that, oh, this shouldn't apply in development with developing countries because zero rating might be a really great way of giving underserved community underserved communities access to at least a slice of the internet. And so people who support this idea say, well, if I'm poor, it's better for me to get access to a part of the internet for free rather than not have internet at all. And so they say, if you, zero, if you forbid ISPs from just making certain applications available to everybody on a zero-rated basis, like free basics from Facebook or these Facebook zero plans that were existing, you are hurting users and particularly those poor users who can't really afford internet access. I think that is an absolutely false choice because the alternative is not between giving users access to a subset of applications that are zero rated or not giving them access to applications at all. And here's why. So in many of the zero rating plans, the application provider doesn't actually pay to be zero rated. So if you look at free basics, Facebook doesn't pay the ISPs to be zero rated. So the person or the entity that pays for the bandwidth is the ISP. How do they do that? They make certain calculations. They look at how much people, people use on average for the zero rated applications. And they roll that into the price of your cellular subscription because you usually pay for the telephone subscription. So that means instead of using this investment to pay for the bandwidth you use for the zero rated applications, let's say free basics, they could give you the same amount of bandwidth put a cap on that, and allow you to use it in an unrestricted way. Um, I think that's a much better alternative. It has exactly the same costs for the ISP. You know, they pay for the bandwidth anyways. They cap at the point where they would have otherwise kept off the, the, um, the service. But it's a lot better for users and everybody else because now users can decide how they want to use this bandwidth and everybody can offer their applications to users. So in that sense, the idea is that just because it's a developed country, you should be all over zero rating, I think is a myth. Um, if you're interested in this model, I think Mozilla has been experimenting with it. They call it equal rating. And I think in some countries, they have offered this kind of model where the ISP gives users a certain amount of data, I think it's 500 megabytes per month, and they can use it in whatever they, way they want. There are actually two other aspects of zero rating and development that people don't necessarily think of. And I actually think zero rating is often particularly harmful for speakers and startups in developing countries. So if we look at zero rating against a fee, there, you know, local startups or local speakers often won't be able to pay to be zero rated. Large international corporations will have no issues paying. So through this complicated mix of once you allow zero rating, bandwidth caps decrease, it gets a lot harder for local applications, local speakers to get their content and their applications out into the world. And even in those cases where the content provider does not pay money to be zero rated, if you look at the applications that are being zero rated, in those cases, without the payment of the fee, it's either the ISP zero rates their own application, online video or cloud storage, that kind of thing, or they pick the top category, the top applications in a category. So they might say, we zero rate the top three social networking applications. And then if you look at them, surprise, it's Facebook and you know large international corporations. So you might say they are effectively paying with their brand, but what this does is it's just another way of cementing the dominant position of these applications. And again, it makes it a lot harder for a new entrant to be successful. Imagine if Facebook is zero rated and you are a Brazilian social network and you are not zero rated. You know, even if there is no payment involved, 
users would have a really hard time choosing the non-zero rated application. So I actually think zero rating and development tilts in the other direction, where zero rating is really harmful for local content and applications.